Hey, 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 hi, everybody. I hope you're all having a good day. I hope you're all smiling and enjoying your lovely day. So in this following tutorial, I'm going to be showing you on the camera settings for Wabadoo. Uh, so that way you can be able to have some cool effects with your VTuber avatar. Um, or uh, you can even have, um, you know, camera toggles and such, basically. So I'll try my best to show you uh, all these things, basically. So that way you can become a Wabadoo master. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and get some get started. So right here, uh, we have um, enabled. You can disable or enable your camera. Um, this is definitely useful if you have multiple cameras and you don't want to have uh, your computer explode or anything by rendering all those cameras. So but by any chance you want to try limiting or optimizing your setup, you can definitely have it where all the other cameras are disabled, but one camera is enabled and so on, basically. You can utilize blueprints to set up hotkeys for it, but again, we will not be going over the blueprints right now because um those things can be a bit intense for now i'll be focusing on trying to make beginner tutorials for you guys basically uh but basically what we're going to do uh is um there's a transform thing so this is definitely really useful if you want to have very exact precision on your setup basically so if you want to have it let's say um you want to have it so it's like a very specific angle, so all these have to be very specific numbers. Then you can be able to have it where it's set up accordingly, basically. Um, but otherwise, though, uh, pretty much do whatever you basically prefer, basically, uh, regarding you know, the camera positioning. Then you have controls here. So controls here, you can change it so there's free look. Free look is referring to the thing that Unity has. So if you ever use Unity before, you can use WASD to control your camera. It's really nice if you want that fly camera look, basically. But otherwise, if you do not like that, then you can definitely just stick with the default orbit camera. If by any chance you don't want to change your camera settings too often, you can set the camera to be set to none, so that way you don't have to change your camera position on on accident. This is definitely really useful if you're going to use multiple cameras and you're just going to rely on hotkeys to change them and such. But either way, we're going to set it to orbit character for now, which is right click to move your camera around, middle mouse to uh, pan, left click to also rotate as well, and then middle mouse to scroll um, to zoom in and out basically. All right, so now that we have that at least established, uh, what we're going to then do is, of course, control sensitivity. So if you feel like your camera controls are way too fast, you can go ahead and decrease the sensitivity so that way the movement is a lot more slower. Um, otherwise, though, you can have it where it's a lot more faster so that way if you want the changes to be more rapid, um, you can also set it to that too, basically. But for now, I'll set mine to be one. You can also have yours where your camera focuses on your character, basically. So basically, whenever your character moves around, basically, you can have it where the camera will follow your character, basically. So like mine, it's doing this, so the camera's always following. But otherwise, if you have it where the camera doesn't focus on the character, um, basically, for that case, if you were to move your character instead, you can have it where now the character can move, but the camera's not following basically so yeah so that's pretty much what you can do if you prefer that it's pretty nice uh i guess depending on just a uh, preference basically we'll set that to be our character for now though so the camera is always affecting or at least following our character we can also have it where there's a follow camera speed so if you want it to be very fast you can set it to be high or if you want it to be slower you can of course set that up for now we'll just leave it at around this number basically and you can always reset the camera transform basically resetting all these settings basically but either way though now we have output now in case you're wondering how do you get your VTuber into OBS, you will be able to use either Spout, NDI, or Virtual Camera. So for sh live streaming, if you're a VTuber who's live streaming your avatar and you're just only by yourself, you could just use Spout Capture only. It's much more optimized and just a lot better to use. The only reason to use NDI is if you want to do some collab stuff. So if by chance, um, if by any chance, like let's say you're going to use Multi-V with Wadudo, then I would recommend have NDI for that sort of case. Otherwise, do not use it as it does rely on a lot of power from your PC and it's really unoptimized. So I don't recommend it for normal usage, only with collabs. Virtual camera is definitely useful uh, if you want to, of course, again do some collab stuff or if by any chance uh you want to go on a discord call zoom call or skype call or something and you want your avatar to be there you can have your virtual 
camera set up there. And you can also mirror it if you wish, but pretty much it'll let you know what type of output the camera is going to basically. Um, but pretty much I'll set mine to have no virtual camera and I only want spout capture. Um, but you'll have to download the spout plugin for OBS and you'll have to set it up from there. I do have a tutorial that sort of explains the whole spout stuff if you are interested. Otherwise there's other tutorials as well that explain the whole setup. Once you have that basically, uh, you can go to basic properties and you can be able to set up um, so by default, you'll probably have the sky, basically. Um, you can have it where the transparent background is right here. There you go. And you can have it where it's chroma key, so by any chance you really want it where you have a green screen for your character, then you can be able to set that up. Otherwise, um, like if you absolutely want to use it, you can. This is definitely more recommended if you're going to do, again, collabs and stuff, or if you're going to do uh, some videos, maybe. Like if you want your character to have some you know, video editing stuff, basically, this is definitely recommended to do that. Otherwise, for just simple live streaming, it's not recommended to use chroma key, but for videos or other stuff like that uh, or clubs it is recommended to use chroma key um, but otherwise I usually set mine to be transparent you can also set uh, set up the field of view basically right here Ooh. so you can change like how flat or how like you can adjust the perspective basically just field of view of how your character looks so yeah you can set that up basically and then you can also have orthographic projection which definitely this is pretty useful if by chance I guess you want that more flatter look on your character, but it can have some issues, basically. I usually personally prefer to stay on perspective mode, but maybe for some cases you may prefer orthographic mode. But do keep in mind, if you're going to load environments, this is a very bad option to enable. It's more recommended for, like, having your only your character, basically. So keep that in mind, basically. Uh, but either way, though... Uh, you can have handheld movement. You can be able to enable it. It basically allows that, let's say, I'm going to go ahead and like have this guy here. It can have it where your ca camera can feel a lot more natural. It's really good if you're going to do a lot of video recording stuff. Otherwise, for live streaming, I don't recommend this. Unless you're going to do something like just chatting streams or you have an environment. This can definitely give a much more realistic and natural feel to your VTuber scene. But again, it's your preference though, and you do what you wish, basically. But otherwise, though, this is really great for that natural look you can increase uh the intensity of the camera or decrease it or you can make the speed really rapid or very slow so you can have it where it's like ah uh, so yeah um so you can do that either way um, you can then have it where on the tone mapping, this is where you can adjust the different color. It's like a filter, basically, you can set up. Uh, this is pretty nice depending on if you're trying to get like a very specific scene going on. Otherwise, I personally do not use this as it's a bit much for me. But you can get some pretty nice effects depending on the scene you're trying to aim for. This can really help with like getting that nice emotional tone going on. So yeah. Uh, and you can, of course, um, you don't need to have the LUT texture. You can change your vibrance, of course, if you feel like your character is a bit too dull. Uh, so you can adjust it according to how you prefer. Uh, you can even set the tint, of course, to be, let's say, a different color and such uh, for lighting. So, yeah. Wow. Um, but yeah, besides that, though, you can do that. Um, otherwise, you can go ahead here and bloom. Set up a nice little bloom effect, basically. And uh, you can adjust the intensity here or threshold. Basically say however you want, basically. And then um, you can have it where on the tint here, basically. Again, uh, just going to adjust this real quick. You can also have the tint to be like the color that you prefer, depending on the scene, basically. So, yeah. You can also have a uh, depth attenuation. Um... Oh wait, attenuation. Uh, this is basically where if you go farther from your, uh, you know, farther from your scene, the bloom will be reduced. Um, you can have it to be like this value. So that way it's not so bright in the far distance. Um, and then you can, of course, again, have more, like, a more specific distance. But otherwise, uh, you should be fine. Ambient occlusion is definitely recommended if you want that more realistic feel. It's, it's not just limited to realistic models. This could also be used on tune styled models basically depending on your settings basically uh so you can have it set up uh in like a very specific way but otherwise uh for my character it's not recommended it's not good but otherwise though depending on your settings though you may actually have a pretty nice look to it depending depending on your preference basically so yeah um then you have anamorphic 
flares, which is like that nice shiny layer. Like if you ever use MMD and Raycast and you see this effect a lot, yeah, that's pretty much what this is. Uh, but pretty much it's really nice if you want that nice, like pretty shine, basically. Wow. Um, otherwise, though, um, I only I would use it a little lightly, but or I just don't use it at all. It really depends on your preference, basically. Um, you can change, of course, the settings, tint, or the spread, basically. Or you can make it horizontal or vertical. Pretty much change those settings. And then depth of field, you can have it so the background can be a bit blurry. So, like, if you have an environment and you want it to be blurry, you can, of course, adjust that, basically. Or you can have it um, where, you know, it, like, basically, it just depends on your preference. You could have it where even your character is probably blurry, but otherwise... Uh, it's good to have it, like, the background be blurry so you're the focus, basically. So, yeah. Um, but either way, the, you could just play around with the settings, basically. So, yeah. Uh, then there's chromatic aberration. Um, this one is really nice if you want that sort of, like, the sort of look, basically. Uh, really depends if you want this. Otherwise, you don't have to have it. Then you got lens dirt, uh, which is, like, that filter. It's pretty nice if you want, like, that sort of, like, if you're outside, you want that sort of outside vibe and such. Um, you can be able to have that look, basically. So, yeah. Um, I probably would go for something like this, maybe, and have a very light, uh, broke. Um, so, yeah. Um, well, like this. There you go. Um, but yeah, so pretty much you can adjust whichever one you want, basically, and then have that filter. Uh, but then you can also just disable it. I probably might disable it if I can. Yeah, just like make it really, really light. Uh, and then you got Vignet. Uh, if you want to, this is pretty good for videos and such. You can change however color you want, basically. Uh, I can have it be set to white. So you can have it like that, so it's like very angelic, wow! Um, but you can like pretty much adjust however you want, basically, so yeah. Um, change the fade out here, pop, pop, pop. Ooh, uh, and then you can make it blink. Whee! Okay. Um, but either way, I'll have that off though. And then you can have night vision, so you have that sort of binary look. Oh my god, I'm a tomogachi. Um, or what was it called again? I forgot what it's called, but yeah, you can have like this thing set up basically. It's really a uh, fun effect basically, so yeah. Um, and then you can have blur, so if you want to blur your face, maybe like for a model debut you can have this, or maybe like for, um, for like a scene maybe you can have this, so yeah. Really cool stuff. And again, you can utilize the blueprints to toggle these expressions, of course, or expressions, uh, effects. Uh, you can definitely utilize that. Again, I'm not going to go over the blueprints. I want to go over like some basic settings for what it does, though. But yeah, pretty much you can do that. Um, but then you can have pixelate. So if you want to have that pixely look, do keep in mind the higher your number, it will not work. But you can pretty much have it like this, basically. Uh, depends on what you like, and then, of course, advance. If basically this is referring to your distance, if you get too close to the model or too far and such, uh, depending on how the effects will be clipping, basically. But yeah, overall, though, uh, pretty much that should at least cover the whole settings regarding the whole camera stuff, basically. Again, you can mess with them on blueprints, up hotkeys, and all that cool stuff. Again, the documentation does have information about that, but hopefully, this should at least help you out on this on least getting started. Also, you can click on the plus button right here and you can add a camera right here. So click on here, add a camera, and that way you can change different cameras basically. So I'll change mine to be like this. And in case you're wondering, maybe you probably add a lot of effects to your other camera and you want to copy over, then you just click on this camera right here and then you just click on the duplicate asset here and that way this camera um, can be like another one basically. Uh, so I'll go ahead and remove this camera here, and then we'll have this one, and we'll have this one so like it shows my entire body like this. Oh wow! And um, in order to toggle the cameras, you could just press the tab key, so that way you can toggle between them basically. But of course, if you set up your blueprints, you can set up so it's a different hotkey other than tab. But this at least is good for at least getting started as a beginner basically. So yeah. Uh, but otherwise though, I hope that this tutorial helps you out regarding cameras and effects though. Um, this is pretty much just a remake tutorial basically. But let me know if you have any other questions regarding what I do. I highly recommend joining their Discord server. They have a lot of information there. The developers really active and they'd be happy to help you out though. But let 
let me know if anything. Um, I'll leave my socials here, and I hope you have a lovely day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye! Also, as a bonus, by the way, you can actually go click uh, on this little button right here, the little paw. Click on settings here, and then you can go to general, and you can actually have a general output saying right here, basically. So you don't have to go through each camera and set up a spout capture. You can actually be able to have NDI or virtual camera. So instead of each camera having their own thing and causing a lot of stress to your specs, you can just have this instead, and it's just a lot more convenient. Otherwise, if you have very specific needs regarding how you set up your cameras and such, uh, let's say for a collab, you want a very specific uh, place on your character before your stream, you want a different placement, then you may want to have it where your spout or your virtual camera NDI is at different, you know, different camera things basically. But I just want to at least explain that uh, for more advanced users and such like that. But either way, that's pretty much all I have to say. Bye bye!